Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, the French Revolution. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about the French Revolution and sources that we can use in our classrooms to teach the French Revolution. We can think about it in two ways. We can think about sources we can use in the classroom, but we can also think about sources that enhance the learning that happens at home or any out of school time. So when we think about the French Revolution, lots of sources written and uh, pictures and because it is such a rich period, it's worthwhile going to these online resources. And the first one I go to is historychannel.com. It's got lots of videos. It's got access to a lot of art and not just text. So it's a way to make history come alive. And I'm going to show you right now. You can see the art that is there. And this is, of course, the famous scenes from the guillotine in, uh, in Paris. Although... Uh, what is often forgotten is many of the people that died actually did not die in Paris, but died outside of Paris. And you can see that there are lots of short videos. I've talked about this before. Short videos are fantastic if you want to use them in the classroom because you don't want to show a 40-minute movie. You want to show a two, three-minute movie that gives an overview or explore one uh, section of history. And here you've got something about the guillotine, and that's always interesting, although, uh, again, only a small part of the revolution. Uh, the overview of the first revolution with uh, everything that happens there. And then you have also text that you can explore with uh, hyperlinks. So for example, exploring the link between the American Revolution and the French Revolution is something that you can do here within the website. The information is good and accurate, although rather traditional. So if you want something that looks at the French Revolution in different ways, I would go to Big History and explore it from the larger context of development over time that Big History provides. But you can see lots of access to information. And again, I think the visual information is one of those things that an online resource can offer in large quantities. So there's a way to think about the revolution, but also to be critical and treat the art that comes with the French Revolution as a primary resource that you have to think about who drew it, why did they do it, what was their view on the revolution, were they part of the revolutionary uh, period, and how they interacted with it, were they there to actually see it, and all of that. So this is actually a great way to bring the art into it, but also discuss uh, how it played out, how it is a primary source that we need to be very careful uh, looking at. The other source that I want to talk about is out of the Encyclopedia Britannica. There's again very rich resources, very well sourced, but at the same time there's less text. And if you have access to Britannica Kids, which is here on the right hand side, what they have is multiple readability levels. So if you have kids reading at different levels or if you're teaching it at different grade levels, kids can still have access to these sources, be able to interact with them, reading, with, reading them, and then being able to explore them in depth, which I think is really important. If the text is too high and too complicated, kids will definitely give up. So this is a way to keep exploring, and this is Britannica. Uh, as I mentioned before, Big History Project does similar things but looks at longer periods. So this is the transition from uh, the High Middle Ages to the Early Modern Period, shifting into the Modern Period. Traditionally, that's where we place the French Revolution. And so thinking about this in the longer scheme of things, the transition and the abolition of the feudal world into the modern world, also the colonial world becomes an important part of this and it foreshadows what happens and it's a big part of the cause and effect out of the French Revolution. Finally, I want to share one app that would actually work on your iPad and this is from the Versailles Palace. So, this is the Versailles Visitor Guide and it does give you some access. This is the free version. You can pay for a full version, but I think that the free version has enough for kids to explore what the life of the kings 
a, of France were before the revolution. And so they can see the grandeur, they can see what it looks like today. Uh, they can definitely look at the history. So if you click here, you get the history of Versailles, you get lots of images. Again, uh, some of them drawn, some of them modern images, and a, a sense of how the kings lived and a, th a way to think about the difference between the people of France that were living in the villages and then the way the kings lived as a reason, at least a partial reason, for the revolution. So this is the Versailles Visitor Guide and again, a way to get into what does it really look like, not just in words on page, but actually in rich images that kids can explore on their own. So today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked about the French Revolution and I'll see you next time.